Welcome to our world news program. Today, we dive into the vibrant conclusion of Hong Kong's Chinese Culture Festival, which wrapped up last month after four months of showcasing the rich heritage and national pride of Chinese culture. With thrilling performances and engaging activities, the festival attracted a diverse audience and left a lasting impact on the community. In the sports realm, Hong Kong's rugby team is gearing up for the HSBC SVNS series, determined to make a comeback after missing out on Olympic opportunities last year. Coach Jevon Groves and player Liam Doherty share their ambitions and the team's newfound versatility, as they aim for promotion and success on the global stage. On the music front, South Korean rapper Lil Cherry, also known as Mukbang Mama, is making waves with her latest single, Crying Into Club. Drawing inspiration from her family's artistic background and the character Lucy Liu played in Charlie's Angels, she aims to challenge stereotypes and promote Asian representation in the industry. Join us as we explore these exciting stories further. Please continue to watch for more detailed content. South China Morning Post reports on the recent conclusion of Hong Kong's inaugural Chinese Culture Festival, which ran for four months and aimed to celebrate Chinese heritage and foster national pride. The event, organized by the Chinese Culture Promotion Office, featured a variety of performances including music, dance, and Chinese opera, along with exhibitions and workshops that showcased traditional crafts such as paper cutting and chongsam making. Ivy Nai Suki, a key organizer, noted the festival's success in selling over 80% of its 65,000 tickets, attracting a diverse audience across different age groups. The festival also included initiatives aimed at engaging younger audiences, such as school performances and behind-the-scenes tours, which helped students like Chan Chuk Hei and Su Zina discover the rich diversity of Chinese culture beyond the traditional pillars of music and painting. South China Morning Post highlights the ambitions of Hong Kong's rugby team as they aim for promotion in the HSBC SVNS series following a challenging year. Liam Doherty, a player on the team, expressed the renewed determination of the squad after experiencing setbacks in Olympic qualification and the World Rugby Series. With back-to-back -back victories in the Asia Rugby 7 Series, the team is on the verge of qualifying for the Challenger Series. Doherty acknowledged the improvements in their skills and teamwork, emphasizing the importance of adaptability during matches. The team's new captain, James Christie, has inspired confidence among players as they strive to overcome past disappointments and focus on achieving their goals in the upcoming competitions. South China Morning Post features an engaging interview with South Korean rapper Lil Cherry, who recently released her single, Crying Into Club. The artist, known for her unique blend of personal storytelling and vibrant music, reflects on her journey from an introverted poetry student to a dynamic performer. She credits her older brother Goldbuta for their collaborative success in the music industry, beginning with their breakout single, Motorola. Lil Cherry draws inspiration from cultural icons like Lucy Liu, whose representation in Charlie's Angels paved the way for more diverse portrayals of Asian women in media. With her upcoming project, All Eggs in the Basket, she aims to challenge industry norms and encourage fellow artists to pursue their dreams while maintaining their artistic integrity. The music video for her latest single showcases her energetic style and dedication to storytelling, embodying her mantra of fully committing to her creative endeavors. South China Morning Post In recent developments, China's missile program has garnered significant international attention, particularly with the testing of the DF-41 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM. This fourth-generation missile, part of the Dongfeng series, boasts an impressive range of 12,000 to 15,000 kilometers, making it capable of reaching the entire U.S. mainland. The DF-41 solid-fuel propulsion system allows for quicker launch readiness and increased survivability against preemptive strikes. Notably, it employs multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle MIRV, technology, allowing it to carry several warheads. As China continues to expand its nuclear capabilities, the DF-41 represents a significant leap in their strategic deterrence efforts, positioning itself as a formidable force in the Asia-Pacific region amidst growing tensions with the US and Russia. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has remained tight-lipped regarding the security guarantees sought from Papua New Guinea, PNG, in exchange for support of its bid for an NRL team, committing up to $600 million over a decade. Despite the financial backing, Albanese emphasized the need for confidentiality in security arrangements, stating that Australia is PNG's preferred security partner. Opposition leader Peter Dutton has called for more transparency from the government concerning the specifics of the agreement, suggesting that linking sports diplomacy to security objectives could be problematic. Analysts have cautioned that such a move may breed distrust in PNG and could potentially harm Australia's reputation in the region, 
as the implications of tying sports funding to security guarantees could lead to complications in future diplomatic relations. South China Morning Post, as discussions intensify over Hong Kong's liquor tax, there are calls from industry groups to reduce the current 100% tax to stimulate the hospitality sector. However, experts warn that this decision should not be rushed. The health implications of increased alcohol consumption, potential revenue loss for the government, and the need for a transparent decision-making process are critical factors to consider. The spirits tax generates substantial revenue, which is particularly vital given the city's current fiscal challenges. Stakeholders, including public health experts and economists, must be consulted to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the potential consequences of any tax changes. The overarching message is clear, while stimulating the economy is essential, it must not come at the expense of public health and fiscal responsibility. South China Morning Post reports that China Resources Beverage, CR Beverage, is set to raise up to 5 billion Hong Kong dollars, 640 million US dollars, through an initial public offering, IPO, in Hong Kong, aimed at enhancing its expansion and supply chain efficiency. The company plans to offer 347.8 million shares at 14 Hong Kong dollars and 50 cents each, with the potential to increase the offering by an additional 52.2 million shares if demand exceeds expectations. With a net gain of 4.72 billion Hong Kong dollars anticipated from the IPO, one-third of the funds will be allocated to strategic expansion and optimizing supply chains. As the second-largest bottled water company in China, CR Beverages' sales of its flagship product, Cestbond Bottled Water, reached an impressive 39.5 billion yuan, 5.5 billion US dollars, in 2023, showcasing its significant market presence. The remaining proceeds from the IPO will be directed towards enhancing sales channels, marketing efforts, research and development, and digital upgrades. CNN highlights a whimsical trend in China where pets are being sent to work in cafes, allowing them to earn what is dubbed snack money. Jane Shui, a 27-year-old PhD student, sent her Sammy a dog, OK, to a dog cafe in Fuzhou, viewing it as an opportunity for her pet to socialize and avoid loneliness while she and her partner are busy. This trend reflects the growing popularity of pet cafes in China, where visitors pay to interact with animals. The concept of pets working part-time at these cafes has gained traction, with pet owners posting job ads for their furry friends on social media platforms. One humorous post detailed a cat's salary in cans of cat food, highlighting the light-hearted nature of this movement. As China is projected to have more pets than toddlers by the end of the year, the rise of pet cafes has surged, with over 4,000 such establishments now operating in the country. South China Morning Post further discusses the Biden administration's consideration of capping exports of advanced AI chips from companies like NVIDIA and AMD to specific countries, primarily in the Persian Gulf, amidst national security concerns. These discussions are still in the preliminary stages but indicate a shift towards tighter export controls, particularly aimed at preventing the diversion of technology to nations with robust surveillance capabilities. The new framework aims to streamline the licensing process for AI chip shipments to countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, while also maintaining strict regulations on shipments to over 40 other countries, especially China. As the demand for advanced AI systems grows globally, the US faces a delicate balance between fostering international partnerships and safeguarding its technological edge, with officials expressing concerns over the implications for human rights and national security. The evolving landscape of AI chip exports could significantly impact US diplomatic relations and the global AI market. South China Morning Post reports that Hong Kong and Chinese stocks experienced a downturn as disappointing economic data heightened concerns about the need for fiscal stimulus from Beijing to bolster growth. The Hang Seng Index decreased by 0.6%, settling at 20,976.99, while the Hang Seng Tech Index and CSI 300 Index both saw minor declines. Notably, Zijin Mining Group's shares dropped 2.7% following a dip in gold prices, influenced by expectations of the Federal Reserve reversing interest rate cuts. Baidu and Trip.com Group also faced losses, with declines of 1.7% and 1.8%, respectively. September's export growth for China was reported at a mere 2.4%, the slowest since May, alongside disappointing figures for new yuan loans and aggregate financing. As investors await the upcoming National People's Congress, where discussions on increasing government borrowing may take place, Finance Minister Lan Fon suggested that there is potential for raising debt levels. In contrast, other major Asian markets showed resilience, 
with Japan's Nikkei 225 rising by 1% and Australia's S&P ASX 200 gaining 0.8%. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6do brief via email. Can't get enough